Welcome everybody to the final session, as I've mentioned already a few times, and uh, today uh, for, for Turnes Battery Week. And uh, today we will be discussing about the active material handling and recycling part of it. So, recycling of batteries and acids, the innovative solutions for challenging applications. And there will be two parts today, uh, differing a little bit from the previous ones. So the per part one will be from Andritz, and the part two will be from the Dietrich process systems. So part one, an inside view on battery recycling and closed inert processing systems. And for that session, I will be your moderator, Rolf Sundström, working at the Finnish office at Turne. And today's star will be Anastasia Zekili, working at Andritz Recycling, and she is the head of technology center. So contact Turne regarding the Andres equipment from for Finland, yours truly, Rolf, Sweden and Norway, my colleagues Matthias, Denmark, Rafi, Poland, Robert, and the Baltic States, my colleague Andres. So without further ado, let us begin. Hello from my side. I'm happy to join you in this uh, webinar. So my name is Anastasia Zevkili from Andrit. Uh, we will uh, go through a bit uh, the recycling uh, process, the mechanical uh, part uh, of the batteries based on our um, experience on fridge recycling. Uh, so I hope you can uh, all see my screen. Uh, first, just a, a few words about us, about Andrit. Uh, so Andrit is, um, a global uh, technology provider for um, zinc equipment systems, uh, plants and services in the pulp and paper industry, metal working and steel industries, hydropower stations, pumps, uh, solid liquid separation, uh, as well as animal feed and biomass pelleting, and of course, recycling. Our headquarters are here in Graz, Austria, uh, but we are uh, present worldwide with 280 sites and um, around two th two 25,000 uh, employees, colleagues. Um, Andritz Recycling is um, uh, combining uh, the experience and know-how of uh, key players in the recycling industry and provide solutions for the re reject um, and the rug um, waste, electrical and electronic uh, scrap waste, fridge recycling, uh, metal and special waste, organic waste, end of life vehicles and vehicle parts, plastic and um, the uh, production for the air. Uh, just um, um, an overview of our uh, threading machines, which are the, the key equipment of our plants. Um, so we have um, various machines for uh, pre-threading of waste, um, secondary or one step uh, threading, as well as fine threading and grinding. And uh, we also have um, uh, one machine we will see uh, closer a bit later, uh, the QZ for dismantling without threading. Um, of course, we offer uh, integrated recycling solutions, uh, 10 key recycling pl plants um, in our um, all of our um, areas of uh, um, technology um, uh, solutions. So uh, we um, join our expertise for the material threading, the separation and the recovery of the waste with even more demands um, towards reco more recovery rates and higher purity rates. And uh, we look also uh, to uh, develop highly efficient processes, uh, low energy consumption, and of course, to meet all the latest standards uh, for our processes regarding safety, environment, recovery, and so on. Um, the digitalization solutions could not uh, be missing from such concept. Uh, so we have uh, developed our own uh, digitalization landscape metrics, um, starting from single machines, single equipment uh, solutions, to um, digitalization solutions for uh, the entire recycling plants. 
going now uh, deeper into the battery recycling. Um, we uh, offer the mechanical uh, treatment, including uh, part of the thermal treatment, uh, which we will see in the next slides. And uh, we have some main challenges to face in this area. Uh, first of all, the type and origin of the batteries. Um, as you know, of course, we have many different batteries uh, make it from the chemistry, uh, shape, size of the batteries, but also uh, the application they come from, like household um, use or um, industrial use, um, uh, energy um, uh, storing, uh, or uh, of course the electrical mobility, the vehicle um, immobility. We have the uh, batteries from e-mobility as well as the old, uh, the usual, the old ones we know, uh, automotive batteries. Uh, the focus um, now is, of course, in the lithium-ion batteries, um, uh, where we um, are also asked to provide a solution for the mechanical treatment part. Uh, the batteries rich in the mechanical treatment, they can come from different upstream processes. Uh, pre-treatment as well as downstream um, processes can vary. Uh, so the requirements of the output uh, from our process um, may vary, although it's not that uh, big difference in the field of, um, of the lithium-ion batteries with the most, um, uh, with, the, with the chemistries more, most um, available on market right now, because there are also uh, other chemistries that may, um, come up in the recycling. Uh, a challenge, of course, is uh, to handle the hazardous and corrosive materials uh, and to treat them appropriately, which are uh, released or um, uh, are formed uh, during the mechanical process. Uh, so it's for us, it was for us a big challenge to develop a safe and environmentally sound recycling process and also to develop the special uh, machine metallurgies and the manufacturing materials for the equipment to be able to handle these materials. Uh, just a um, um, quick look in the pretreatment. What we have basically uh, faced up to now is uh, thermal pretreated batteries um, where um, there are no organics um, anymore. So we don't have the... Um, uh, problem or the challenge uh, to handle the electrolyte. And um, of course, uh, there is no uh, charge anymore, no residual charge in the battery cells. Um, most common, I would say, is um, the discharge um, process, uh, where um, these are also different uh, processes developed where we have, uh, we should have like a deep discharge, a zero uh, state of charge. However, this is not always the case. We may have some defect circuits or some rest uh, charge still in the batteries. And of course, we still have the electrolyte in the cells. Um, so uh, what we have developed based on our experience in the recycling uh, is a closed system. Uh, sealed system from the feeding point to the screening of the black mass uh, in an inert atmosphere uh, where we, uh, let's say, replace oxygen with um, nitrogen. And uh, we have an intensive uh, gas extraction throughout the process. With this concept, we, uh, we can avoid the risks from leakages uh, from potential explosions and fires, which can be caused from different uh, reasons, like the electrolyte, which is a flammable material if it's pressurized, uh, short circuiting might uh, occur if we have a uh, rest charge, thermal runaway by high temperatures during processing, or cell rupture, which we have, of course. Um, a benefit of our process is that we can handle uh, the batteries as they come. That means either in a pack, modules, or end cells. And uh, we don't uh, require a manual dismantling. 
And this, of course, uh, increases the safety of the whole process and the efficiency. Uh, we've also um, integrated in our system the recovery of electrolyte, the evaporation of the electrolyte and recovery uh, through the thermal, thermal treatment. And through the mechanical separation, we can liberate and recover the casing, the foils and the black mass. And all this in a fully automated process. Uh, here is an overview of the process. So we have the uh, input, the, so the acceptance point where there might be a control and classification. This varies considerably depending on whether the batteries are, uh, for example, production rests, uh, where they come from the manufacturer or um, like in the electric vehicles, uh, where they are obliged to take back the batteries or whether they come from uh, recyclers, recycling uh, yards, where it can be a mix of batteries and there might be a classification required. Uh, then is the pre-treatment process and then the batteries under our system. We have a dismantling. Uh, if we have, for example, the packs uh, combined and all with a granulation system which both of uh, which can be uh, standalone solutions depending on the input material. Uh, in this state, we also uh, have uh, the inert atmosphere and the gas extraction. Uh, after we uh, thread or open up the batteries, we have the thermal treatment to evaporate the electrolyte. And then the screening where uh, we can separate the black mass from uh, the rest of the material and further uh, clean it and uh, further screening and classification uh, can take place. The um, uh, rest of materials, mainly the foils and the casing and the separators, they go through um, air separation um, systems where we, through the light heavy uh, separation, uh, we can separate the foils from the casings, for example, and then uh, combine this with metal separation to get the different metals uh, like the uh, ferrous metals, the aluminum and the copper, copper separated um, and the plastics, of course, and separation. Uh, the gas treatment, uh, there is, uh, of course, also here a very um, challenging <laughs> part of the process uh, where uh, we cooperate with partners uh, to do also, of course, we need to remove any hazardous or toxic um, components may be formed and then uh, recover um, the, the, vapor, the electrolyte. Uh, but also uh, part uh, of the nitrogen if we um, need to use it in the process. Uh, and here would like to show you a bit the, the basic machines we use. This is the uh, our uh, um, Querstrom Terfaner <laughs> QZ, uh, which is a machine used for dismantling materials uh, without um, uh, destroying the single uh, parts. Uh, so we have a very good liberation and very good uh, separation characteristic afterwards. The machine has no cutting tools, uh, but it has rotating um, chains or other tools on the bottom. And uh, through uh, this impact and friction um, between the material, the chains and the wall on the machine, uh, we have this uh, open up effect. And uh, here, because of the geometry, of the machine, we can have a very good uh, inertization without any um, uh, hidden spots. And also a, a very good uh, gas extraction, where here we can um, extract the gas from several points uh, on the top of the machine and on the discharge area. Uh, we, with this machine, we can um, change the parameters also during operation. Uh, the holding time, the speed of the machine, and uh, also um, the temperature inside the machine, depending on the application uh, and other operating parameters. 
we also have um, uh, bolted wear plates on the inside of the machine, on the bottom and on the wall. And uh, we, we have in this case for the battery, for example, special uh, materials uh, we use for these um, parts. So all the parts of the machine that come in contact um, with the batteries, they are done and made of special materials also in the discharge area. Uh, the other machine we use uh, for the, in the battery processing is the granulator. Uh, this machine uh, has a screen, uh, so we can produce a specific granulometry. And uh, uh, th in this way, we have the full liberation of the foils of the uh, cells. And um, we also have a very good uh, liberation so of the black mass so that it does not uh, remain on the foil. Uh, this is a um, um, fast running machine uh, with the uh, rotor blades, um, searing of the material between the rotor and the stator blades. And uh, below the cutting system, below the rotor, we have the screen. Uh, both the rotor, the whole cutting system, the cutting chamber, with the wear parts and the screens uh, can be made of special materials. We also have a, a pushing system here to um, um, enhance the capacity and to avoid bridging if, for example, we have modules or small packs of batteries. And uh, the, of course, many advantages of this material is we have a very homogeneous uh, granulate and then we can uh, separate very good uh, through density, for example, uh, or air separation uh, technique. And of course, the machine is very is a very robust machine, and uh, we have um, a very good access uh, to the machine. And also, uh, we have a special seal design um, to inert here if we need, and also. Uh, have a closed uh, discharge system uh, through a screw conveyor. So uh, this is the first part of our presentation. Uh, the second part is uh, our fridge recycling uh, solution, um, which is also um, the base for our knowledge and experience um, for uh, also for the battery recycling solution. Uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Uh, Uwe Hermsdorf, our technical director, uh, was going to present it. Unfortunately, he had to uh, go to a, one of our plants uh, today and is not able uh, to join us, but we will go through his presentation uh, together. I don't, uh, I think we should then uh, discuss any questions at the end uh, all together. Anastasia, let's take the questions after the Uva's presentation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so we, um, we are proud to say that uh, we are uh, one of the market leaders in the fridge recycling market. Um, and uh, uh, we'd like to go through this process now and um, try to see a bit where are the, maybe there's some common or similarities with the battery recycling. Uh, just a small uh, view on, um, on a fridge. Uh, so here we have, uh, um, as the main uh, parts, we have the a cooling circuit, uh, which is um, mostly through a compressor and a liquefier. We uh, have the cooling agents then from um, liquid to gaseous. And uh, through this process, we have the release or the binding of energy. We all know that the back of a refrigerator is warm <laughs> uh, because we release here the energy and, uh, when uh, we go in the inside of the refrigerator, we use the energy from the inside. That's why we have a cooling effect. Um, and also we have the insulation panels here. Uh, we mostly we do with a polyurethane foam uh, with uh, some blowing agents inside. Um, so all, both the cooling agents and the blowing agents are, um, of course, uh, 
uh, challenge to handle and uh, we have different cooling agents um, that uh, can, uh, of course, there are like um, ozone depleting substances should not be released in the environment. Uh, but um, also uh, they are also a challenge for processing uh, due to um, explosions or flammable uh, parts. Um, also, however, the blowing agents in the insulation panels, we also have ozone depleting um, uh, agents there, which uh, we need to safely recover and um, handle and treat, um, as well as uh, flammable uh, agents we need, or uh, explosive gases that we need to uh, treat with safety. And uh, our system is designed so as to recover safely and uh, um, all of these uh, agents we meet in the refrigerator refrigerators and cooling appliances. In some special cases uh, with some special uh, pretreatment. So here is an overview of the fridge plan. Uh, here is the first step, the degassing. So here uh, we degas the cooling system where we have the cooling agents and the oil from the compressors who separate from each other and uh, store in special um, containers. And uh, then we have the decast uh, um, refrigerators where also the compressors are also removed. There's no uh, reason to get them into the recycling systems. Um, they enter the closed system, which starts from here. We have uh, uh, here a special gate system. And uh, it goes here to the dismantling machine. And after the dismantling machine, uh, we go to the fine screen. Because through um, the dismantling, the QZ, we have the polyurethane foam is very, very fine, grind it, and we can remove it through screening. And uh, through all this system, the system remains closed and in an internet atmosphere. And the polyurethane here, we clean further in the thermal uh, process also close uh, system in the, and then we go um, with the um, cooled polyurethane, uh, we can leave the closed system and go into the big bags for the storage. The offer size material from here goes to a further uh, separation for plastics and metals. Also then in an open system uh, and uh, is then also um, stored in containers or big bags. And uh, we um, work with a, a um, cryo condensation uh, for uh, the recovery of the solvents. So here you can see the our dismantling machine, the QZ machine, and uh, the special feeding system uh, with the two doors. These two these two doors through system um, is so that. In each case, one of the two uh, is closed. So during feeding, we have here a closed uh, door and we feed the material. And when the conveyor is full, we close this door and we open the door up. And uh, then we have the uh, feeding and dismantling. Uh, here we also have um, explosion protection measures, um, which I have to say in the fridge plant, because of the inner atmosphere, we've never come to need, but. Um, Together with the um, uh, certifying um, commission, we have uh, said we have this as, as a contingency, which can be either bursting discs on top or um, explosion suppression measures. And here we have also, here we have the nitrogen and here we have the nitrogen and also here we have the extraction of uh, gas, of the gases released uh, within the QZ. Um, then here we have the fine screening. We go with the closed heating screw also to retain the temperature of the material uh, with very fine screening, uh, different depending on the application. We remove the polyurethane powder, the fine powder. And uh, this system has also with um, slew system 
on uh, bottom and uh, uh, so we can ensure that uh, the offer size material when it goes in the non inert atmosphere outside that uh, we have a safe uh, transport and on the other side we continue in the closed system for the pines uh, here is the oversize material. Uh, we have uh, different separation techniques. Here is an uh, air separation to remove to separate lights uh, from from heavies. Uh, we also use this uh, to uh, clean the material. And then we go to the metal separation. We have magnets. We have eddy current. Um, also, other uh, separation techniques like optical uh, sorting can be used depending on the requirement and the application. And this is the thermal treatment uh, for the polyurethane in this case, where we have a, a, um, we can control the retaining time. We can ensure that the temperature all over the material is at the right levels and sustained at this level during the retaining time, um, so that we have the uh, required um, result here, like here is the, evapor the recovery of any rest uh, CFCs, for example, from the pendant, from the uh, polyurethane home. Uh, finally, we have the solvent recovery. Then uh, this is, as I said, the cryo condensation unit where we go with the temperature and pressure uh, because we have uh, different condensing points for each of the um, substances we have. Uh, in the gas stream, and uh, so this allows us to recover the CFCs uh, and uh, the pendant, and uh, but also uh, to um, recover a part of the nitrogen uh, needed uh, for to inert the process. Uh, depending on the application uh, and how uh, deep in how deep freezing we have to go. Um, we may or may not need a liquid, liquid uh, nitrogen in the fridge plant. We do need. In other cases, it uh, depends on, on uh, the solvents we need to recover. Uh, so this is just uh, the different um, uh, safety measures we have uh, around the plant and all uh, um, controlled through our automation system. And I think now, before I... Go too deep here because I think we're a bit run out of our time. Uh, just uh, to he, to present shortly my colleague, our technical uh, director, Mr. Uwe Hermstorf, who is also at your disposal if you have any future questions or need more information, as well as me, of course. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Mm -hmm.